Vinland Saga, Season 2, Episode 17. Is Thorfinn actually... Gonna fight? He's gonna think mid-battle. Wow. Starting off with some amazing action already. It's not from around here. Yep. Where's the snake prequel? Maybe here it is. <laughs> Maybe we get some flashbacks. The road home. Damn, what an opening to this episode. Oh, yes. The snake is seeing his past through his fighting. Only someone with a similar past could do that. Oh, there we go. He struck a blow. Damn, <laughs> it's been so long since I've seen Thorfinn fight. He just did like a DBC apparate. Whoa. I see where this is going. They're both thinking the same thing. This is a mutual respect building exercise if I've ever seen one. Thorfinn just gained credibility for anything he has to say. Nothing about his his outlook is phony. Anything he says has weight. Also, side note, pretty amazing that Thorfinn hasn't had a fight in how long? Just as good as ever. I mean, I guess he's been clearing trees. That's good. And they're both fighting on lethally, right? It's like they've met for the first time right now. That's not non that's not non-lethal, but you don't know how much they're pulling. He wouldn't. Maybe he would. I want to believe he wouldn't. Thorfinn's not the target. I think you've earned the right to say a few words. Poor Arnheed. I mean, I, not to say Snake wouldn't, what I feel would be uncharacteristic of Snake is just like stabbing Garter while he's unconscious and bleeding out. Wow. Circle's just all in. He's only doing this this speech because he's conflicted and of course hurt, angry, but he knows. He knows it won't, it won't bring his men back. Did he really just do that? No, I don't think so. No, he stopped himself. Or, or not. Or not! Whoa. I can't help but feel, despite how convincing that looked, that there's some manner of fake out here. I mean, I could just be totally misreading it, but it seems to me that Snake is somebody who knows better. He knows that there is no such thing as this kind of rebalancing. To kill an unarmed, perhaps fatally wounded man while he's unconscious seems too low based on what we've seen Snake so far. But then again, knowing something is wrong and something being beneath you doesn't mean you won't do it in a moment of passion or rage. I mean, for points in that column, he seems to be struggling with the, the value of his own life, which is something Thorfinn understands really well. And sometimes when you're trying desperately to believe something that you really need to believe in order to function because you haven't found anything better, or you haven't found any, any more sufficient answers to your questions, you will try to force the balance that makes sense to you, even when intuitively it doesn't really make sense to you, even when you're struggling with it. That was a huge mid-episode cliffhanger right there. He never wanted to fight in the first place. Poor Arnheed. He's still going. This guy. He really is Jesus. Some kind of dark Jesus rising from the dead. But this is no good either. Thorfinn doesn't want this either. This, this is just roles reversed. Same problem. I don't know if he can be talked to. I don't know if he can be reasoned with. He's channeling something inhuman. Poor Arnie. <laughs> this so all just fell into her lap. Though I guess she, she made some choices of her own. She chose to go into the storm. Arnie might be able to reach him, yeah. 
ガルサルもういいのよもう私たちの邪魔をする人はいないのヒャルティも待っているわ This something's wrong this doesn't feel right this feels like a trap is this her just accepting that there's no out ビルカのお兄様の家に預けてあるわ戦になる前に避難させておいたのよ Ugh, this is heartbreaking. This is just her, like, I don't know. You can have it. Sure, take it. This is the most human we've seen him, but I don't think he's getting out of here. Torfin san. Einar san mo. Honton ni. I mean, they really put everything on the line. She knows. She knows. She's already accepted it. She's just trying to make it end. I'm actually worried for Arn Arn he right now. Uh, Garner Garner's not going to make it, but... I mean, I guess they have this moment. Interesting that he's envisioning himself alone, also with his old appearance. It's excruciating. I can really feel this wagon ride. Oh, he's a moment of lucidity. Now would be the time for some words. Ugh, I hate this wagon. Garuzarnoko Sharuti Chichiwa Tatakati Ko Omega Hokore Meo no Tameni Isre Tenisuru Tomi no Tameni. That's part of what hurts so much about Garter's character and story is that on some level I really relate to him and I feel like his ambitions were noble. There's something I totally understand about having someone or people you care about and feeling like it's your role to fight hard to give them everything that you have to give to improve their lot. There is an alternate reality where Garter is just a total hero and creates a family legacy that allows his wife and son to just live a, an amazing, safe, abundant life. It's not principle, it's not honor that he lacks. It's not intent, it's not sacrifice. I mean, largely his fault seems not of his character, but of circumstance. If you were to point to anything as a character flaw, it would be doing just too much or incorrectly assessing his value and worth. There's almost a zealotry to that, that speech he just made for his son and the actions that it led to almost a religious quest that may not have been what really mattered. And that's understandable too. Sadly, it's really hard to assess one's own value to others. It, it doesn't really come through as clearly as it could. And as somebody who's conscientious and wants to have value and wants to do good, you look around for what that could be. And sometimes that leads you to things that are not, not really it. They are more trivial or more superficial. They lead you to be over self-sacrificial in ways you need, you need not be. And in fact, are unhealthy. Because if you truly are already valuable to people, they are worse off by your deterioration. So he left in pursuit of bringing back treasure and in the process left them vulnerable, left them without him, which is the point, you know, the value. And then it's just a vicious cycle, not only because of the circumstances of him, him falling into slavery, but emotionally the fact that he failed. I mean, he is this person with this zealot-like ambition to serve his family, only to have his family fall into ruin. And then he's gone. And so it never seemed like he's able to return to sanity. <laughs> I feel like every parent has a story like that. This man just traveling his whole life in this cart. I just want him to have some closure with Arnid. Okay, yeah, it's okay. You said it. I got a lot of comments saying their son is surely dead, and it's very possible that he is. It makes logical sense, the arguments are sound. That why would they carry on a baby? But for my own heart, <laughs> from, but for my own sake, counter evidence of the fact is you see them carrying him off. It's a non 
zero chance, at least, that he's still alive. I'm trying to convince myself of this, but. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't lit a horse's tail on fire, have you ever been. Are you even a boy? Have you ever even been a boy? Odd confession, though. I mean, if you, if you don't want to go adventuring and be a Viking, are you even a boy? I mean, he's got to have all the closure he can get right now. He's got to live his whole life right now. Is that him? This was the turning point. He couldn't, I mean, he couldn't have known. He couldn't have known. His reach just exceeded his grasp. No undoing it. Man, do I know that feeling. Ugh. Is this... I mean, I don't know. Is this even closure for Arnie? Man, to see him just get a, a, at least a moment of... Relief. It's tragic, but I mean, it's about as much as I can ask for now, I guess. This man has not had peace in a very long time. Oh, poor Arnie. What happens to Arnie now? Not that she cares at this moment. Oh, wow, what a heavy episode. I was not expecting that one. It's so unbelievably sad. This ending song hitting extra hard now as well. There's no way I can feel good about what happened to Garter, and I especially feel bad for Arnie. I mean, she got a reunion, but at what cost? I imagine she definitely had a lot of unresolved anger and pain about what had happened. Maybe that had helped her cope, like my damn husband leaving us alone and letting this happen to us. Not that that would be the extent of her feelings, but I can imagine that being a, an element, right? Like one thing that's there that could be used as a coping mechanism because negative feeling is great for healing or it'll get you there. You know, it'll get you far enough where you can start to live normally. Carter coming back to rescue her, dying in the process, closing his arc in the sense of, you know, coming home in, in a a sort of spiritual sense allows her that final reunion and the closure but also just reaffirms the depths of love she had and has for him the man who she knew and there's just not not any chance that she can hold on to any of the resentment she may have had about what the way things happen about him leaving them that's my take at least so she's just left with like this gaping wound i don't think it could have ended more beautifully though you know i'm, I'm home he's not they don't have a home anymore but in a very real sense he he did he made it back to her and it seems like there was a clarity and an internal penance for him at the end about the way things went so at the very least he got that chance and they got that chance because not everyone does and from a directing standpoint it was just done so well this season has had a, a few of these just unbelievably great kind of psychological logical journeys Thorfinn obviously coming to mind that wagon ride was just excruciating the fact that he's in and out of consciousness traveling through time was so perfectly done it felt so potent and also realistic it's not just like a dream you know you throw in a dream to tell something narratively you want to tell no it makes sense he's fading in and out of consciousness because he's mortally wounded and he gets a couple last moments of reflection and time with his wife who has been the ob object of his insanity and obsession ever since things went so horribly wrong at least he got that you know I mean it was an arc right I, like you could imagine he could have just been a slave for the rest of his life wondering where his wife and son were that have been better it's hard to say but i mean narratively it does feel kind of like the, com the completion of that journey even though it ends in tragedy can't say he didn't follow his destiny can't say he didn't follow that drive for honor all the way to its logical conclusion and then you think in terms of the aftermath it's scorched earth like so many people laid their lives down for this cause thorfinn and einer just i mean they were on the verge of freedom arnie was not free but she lived a pretty stable life you could say at least able to experience certain comfort and moments of happiness that's just gone i mean it's there's no going back from this they're all implicated in a way that i actually respect and i think this is thorfinn the inner a little bit more compromised perhaps emotionally than thorfinn following pure principle doing what they felt was right at great risk which i think was heroic on their part if there are any silver linings it's Thorfinn getting his first test, which I think, you know, he fought, but fought non-lethally. And he needed that challenge either way. Like, he needed to face confrontation. That was going to happen, and it happened. And so now he has a better understanding. You know, he has a better feel for where he is, and he can go from there. Also, well, turned out I was very wrong about Snake in my thinking that he wouldn't actually just 
stab a wounded garter. I think the events of this episode at least revealed that there's torment there and there's a lot of hope. There's potential for Snake. And now he and Thorfinn, Thorfinn sort of have found each other. They met for the first time this episode in a real way. Snake doesn't seem that far off from where Thorfinn is. And you can imagine him being a powerful ally. Now, what I expect to happen is that the problems that they have brought upon themselves will not really come to bear any consequences just because there's a bigger threat coming, which is Canute. You imagine a larger threat like that will, would have a way of making all of this conflict seem minuscule and irrelevant in comparison. So tragic as it is, there is some good that can come out of it, at least. That's my, my optimistic take on it. It was an arc I didn't expect at all. Like, we had all this Canute set up, Canute's coming, and then boom, Garter shows up. But it was an absolute riveting arc start to finish with a really beautiful ending and probably essential i think for the characters individually before we we come together for what i imagine will be a much much more terrifying and larger conflict 